Yo, 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 we are back with another episode and thank God. Uh, we are recording from all different places due to the current pandemic we are living in. And today we have a great guest, um, Bacon of the podcast 91 Donkey Lane. Hello, Bacon. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on. Of course. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Yeah. Today we are talking about Tiger King because what else are people talking about right now besides <laughs> Tiger King? I know. I am so excited to talk about this. I probably was going to watch this, but not anytime soon. And then when you picked this, I was like, all right, I guess I'm watching it earlier than I expected it. <laughs> I got through it probably embarrassingly too quickly. <laughs> so first of all, it, it was a perfect storm for this a documentary series of Netflix releases it and then instantly everybody is forced to stay inside. Yep, uh, right. So then that Sunday uh, that we were all stuck inside, I watched every single episode. Here's my question. Yeah. Bacon. Uh-huh. Do we actually like Tiger King or are we bored? That's my question. Like, is it, do you actually, cause I watched it and I, enjoyed it it didn't bring me that much joy to be honest i was like these kind of things make me depressed and like i can't believe people live like this it's true it's insane to me so did you actually like what do you love about it (sighs) well i love that it's it's able to get emotion out of you uh i think that there's a lot going on here and it's a lot of trash just kind of compacted in uh and something that i point out is when you're One of your only redeeming characters is the reality TV producer. You're in (laughs) deep shit. Like this, everybody. I hated everybody. And I don't know what you guys want to do, but I was just like, I think the only way to talk about this is to just go character by character and discuss their stories. Because, yeah, I think think it's a good trash docuseries that gets people angry and evokes emotion out of people. The fact that you forget about the tigers like two or three episodes in and they kind of come back to them. It's kind of, is it the best series? Like it kind of introduces characters really late in the game without any kind of hint at things. But I enjoyed it overall. I really enjoyed it. I thought they did a really great job with how crazy the story was. And they Mm -hmm. did a great job of presenting all these characters. Yeah, I I agree. For me, the thing that saved it obviously was the Carol Baskin's husband thing. Like, without him going missing, the, I mean, that's the whole point. That's why he puts the hit mm-hmm. on her. That's the whole thing. But without that piece, I th- I don't think that this would have existed. But And mm-hmm. and now that's what people are really honing in on. Like, all these people are literally psychotic, and everyone despises Carol Baskin's. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Out of all those, like, totally hateable people and her being one of them she is getting all the heat everyone else is just like getting new teeth yeah they're like living their best life but poor carol baskin's gonna be hated for the rest of her life i'm so surprised to find out like how people don't hate joe exotic i think he is one of the worst people in the world and everybody is just kind of gives him a pass because he's quirky and weird but like literally his husband killed himself and he shows up to his funeral and makes jokes in front of his mom and everybody knows that he wasn't gay. And it was so that like that alone was enough reason to hate this man. But he yeah. like tortures lion tigers, those orangutans at the end or chim- I forgot exactly what they were, where they were in different cages and they got to be together once they got taken away yeah. from him. It's like Carol Baskin, like out of those three out of Doc, good Doc. Oh my God, Doc and Joe will haunt my dreams until I die. They, I don't get how they're not, like, I totally agree with you. Like, they're not catching as much heat as Carol. And I think they're all horrible human beings. But I'm like, how are these people not terrified of these two? Because I'm like, when, and we'll get into it when we talk about each character. But like, when the one woman gets interviewed who like somehow escaped and she's like talking about her time there. I'm like, this guy is a sick fuck and no no one is giving him any any sort of heat for this no everyone's getting a he he gets the biggest pass by far oh yeah they're master manipulators literally yeah Yeah. Um, somehow even though joe is like so dumb he's a master manipulator and so is doc annal 
Yeah. Can I tell you a funny thing about Doc? I watched the whole thing with my girlfriend, and she told her parents to watch it. And her parents watch it, and the first thing her mom says is, well, I can see why, you know, so many women fell for that Doc character. Ew. And she's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, <laughs> she, he has such kind eyes, and, you know, he's such a handsome man. And we're all like, no, stop it. No. <laughs> that is. Apparently, a lot of women have a thing for him. Yeah, not random here. women. We're not, here. We're not here for Doc. We are not. No, absolutely not. This podcast is not here for no. Doc Channel or Joe Exotic for that. None of them. I texted Kathleen when I was like almost done it, which I was surprised you didn't give me shit for that, Kathleen, because of the last time I texted you when I was almost done something and then yelled at you for spoiling it. <laughs> yeah. But and again, like I keep like jumping ahead and we'll get into it, but like I was, like, really, really disturbed by this. Like, I watched um, the one time, like, before Bet, one of the episodes, it was, like, when you meet Travis and they get mm. married. And I was just, like, watching it. And I'm, like, it, like, exactly what you said. Like, I was, like, I don't think he's gay. But, no. like, they, but they, like, show the wedding and everything. So I'm, like, I, like, maybe I'm just, like, overthinking this. And then, of course, you learn later on that neither of the husbands were gay. But I'm like, I was just like, so like, I'm like, these poor kids, like they're coming here at age 18 and they're just getting like brainwashed and like taken advantage of. And it's really fucking disturbing and sad. Like I was like, this is bothering me. Joe Exotic's a predator and he oh, uses any okay. any he targets those uh, who need help the most. And he uses drugs and money and tigers to manipulate them. Yep. He's disgusting. I hate him so much. <laughs> I know. I know. So, like Cardi B is like rallying behind Joe Exotic. <laughs> even more like, reason to, for me to hate Joe Exotic. Not helping I know, Cardi. She's like trying to get him released or something. I'm like, please keep him in there oh for as long God. as possible. Oh my God. Oh uh, my God. I know. I, I love when they play like the clip of him on his like, well, one every time he calls whoever he's calling and it says like, do you accept this call from, and it's like the county jail, just so it's like a reminder. <laughs> that he's but he's like, it's crazy in here. There, You think it's bad with the tigers. You're in this tiny little cage. And it's just like, oh. yeah, you fucking asshole. You're getting your goddamn karma. Like, what do you yeah, mean? It's justice. It's truly justice. Before we like, because we, we all keep like jumping ahead. There are people apparently that haven't watched this. So, Bacon, I'm going to mm -hmm. give you the mic here. Why don't you tell everyone a, what this show is about in case they haven't watched it yet, but are considering watching it. Tiger King is a mini documentary series, uh, a, a crime drama, I guess, from Netflix that kind of focuses around people who run private zoos. They touch on that, and the three people are Carol, Baskin, Joe Exotic, and Doc. Then they're all, and it and it dives into how they're all insane in their own ways, and they all kind of are able to kind of make their own cults. And even the ones that are presented like sanctuaries aren't exactly run the best. Uh, and it goes into all their lives, and the, they fight with each other. Some of them are friends with each other. And they're just all crazy, insane people. It's like if Jerry Springer had a bunch of people who owned tigers on. Yes. <laughs> that, that. I couldn't tell if Joe and Doc were going to be friend or foe. In the beginning, mm -hmm. I was like, but then you find out that Doc is like Joe's like hero. And like, oh, God. Mm -hmm. no, it's just yeah. double bad. Oh, doubling down on the gross. I know oh. it, it's really bad. So we can start with obviously Joe Exotic because he mm -hmm. is everywhere. He is taking over every meme right now. Mm. Just like I, when I watch after I finish it, like I was like, I never want to see this guy again. And then I go on Facebook and I just see his face immediately. <laughs> I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. We need a new docuseries to come out so this guy can just stop getting attention. So I will let one of you take the floor. It doesn't matter who to to uh, talk about who joe is and obviously we already said most of our feelings about him but go ahead bacon you can... oh okay i feel like i've, t I've talked so much uh so, <laughs> um, you're the guest jo okay <laughs> uh, 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 uh joe exotic owns a uh zoo called g well owned a zoo uh he got he got it taken away from him eventually uh in a switcheroo situation uh, called the GW Zoo, I think it was called or something like yep. that uh, in Oklahoma. He's a gay drug addict who uh, uh, breeds tigers so they're baby tigers so he, people can take photos with them. He also does does things like get married to straight men who one in, ends up killing himself. 
uh, because he's so depressed. Um, what else about him? <laughs> Honestly, that scene that they show of Travis killing himself is so devastating. I cannot oh believe God. they even got that on tape. I mean, did Travis, like, go away from the cameras on purpose? I I don't know what I it is, but that guy is just sitting there in shock for so long. It's so amazing to, you see it where it happens, how he's in shock, and then you see him come out of it, and he's like, oh, maybe it's just a joke. This is just a trick, and his, that's yeah. his body, like, going through the stages, and he's like, oh, my God, it's not a trick. It's real, and that's yeah. when he, when it hits him and he loses it. It is. Okay, so that guy... He's not the best. He's not the best guy. The campaign manager who's helping Joe Exotic try to be a, li- a libertarian candidate in Oklahoma. He's kind of a dumb dumb, and I don't like that he's supporting Joe Exotic. But he wasn't a he wasn't a bad person in any way. So I guess he's good. But like he still doesn't know what a libertarian is. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the like side characters weren't bad people. Like I feel like it was just like. They were bad to me because they supported everything he did. Yes. Uh, the guy who lost his arm, he's cool, too. Uh, I just yes. don't like that he was supporting her. And then the guy who doesn't have legs. Basically, if you were missing any limbs, you're a good guy in this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And it pissed me off because the guy that lost his arm was so like devoted to Joe that he says as soon as he was able to like get back out there, like he was only in the hospital for a week after losing his arm because he didn't want Joe to like catch all that heat for a tiger biting his arm off. So when they first show him, do do they not show the arm? Because you see, you see him talk before they Mm. show that, which is by the way, an amazing opening to an episode. Like I feel like I was kind of like falling off on it. I was getting a little bored and then all of a sudden they open it with that and with her, with him getting his arm bitten off and i'm like oh my god it's insane (laughs) it's awesome i think the way he's sitting i you you see his arm uh but it's there's so much kind of going on there's a lot in the background that it's easy to overlook yeah because i didn't notice it yeah so he also you find out about our great pal joe exotic that when he gets his husbands to marry him he then like feeds them drugs so they stay stick around so he basically turns these people into drug addicts like the one husband john has no teeth the entire he does have teeth now but yes. when this was filmed, he did not have teeth. And the, it made me like laugh, not because I thought it was funny, just because of the awkwardness of like, they're talking about how Travis becomes like a huge pothead, which then leads to him getting into like meth and other mm-hmm. other drugs. And then John's getting interviewed and like the person that interviews him brings up drugs and he just smiles and his teeth are missing. <laughs> And it was like basically him being like, I'm not going to admit that I was doing meth, but where are my teeth? Yes. <laughs> so that, yeah, he's just, he sucks. He sucks so bad. And you just find out that like, kind of going back to what I said before, like a lot of these people came and it's not just for Joe, it's for all of them. They came to these zoos at like very young ages and mm-hmm. And they just become like zoo people and they live there and they become like obsessed and they say it's like an addiction exotic creatures are like an ad- addiction and I you mean, just can't you can't stop I, I, I get that part of it like have you ever been to like a zoo and seen a lion it's so majestic and beautiful yeah like I get that part of it and then like a baby one oh my god yeah the baby ones were so cute but it was also freaking me out when it would show like a three-year-old child rubbing against it and i'm like that child is going to get it's like arm chewed off or something it was freaking me out a little bit the craziest part is joe exotic isn't in jail for any of the tiger stuff any of the meth stuff any of the drug stuff even burning down his own shed that had reality tv stuff in it that was incriminating we didn't we don't even have time to talk about that because he's in jail for uh hiring a hitman to kill one of the other people who owns an animal (laughs) sanctuary that he hates And this is another thing that like people talk about. They're like, do you think that he actually did, did do it? And I'm like, you're out of your mind if you don't think that he (laughs) paid somebody to do it. And they're like, he only paid $3,000. Do you see what he feeds the tigers? Old Walmart meat? This guy does everything at a discount. Of course he did it. I could do a whole podcast on that Walmart truck. I was so shook by that. I was like, what the fuck? 
but and and because that scene was like the workers were picking food that they wanted to eat off of it. Yep. Like it wasn't yeah. just all like dumping all the the old meat. So for anyone who hasn't watched, they basically anything that Walmart meat wise either goes bad or kind of gets moved from the frozen section. They take the Walmart truck and feed the tigers with this leftover meat, which could be anything from, oh God, it was, it was disgusting. And then the workers will go in the back of the truck and pick what they think is still good. And they're like, this is still frozen. We could eat this. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's <laughs> that whole that whole thing is so annoying too because then you can see the way he manipulates it, the way that they say it of like, well, when you go to Walmart and you get something and you can't pay for it, then they can't put it back; they have to throw it away. Yeah, I'm sure there's like two or three of those in that whole truck, but 99 percent of that is rotten meat that's yep. that's gone bad. Like you're just lying to everybody to like put on an appearance and i was thinking about that when when joe exotic throws that like thanksgiving thing for the people in their area yes. and i'm just like how many of those people are eating like expired meat that Everybody. he's like making himself seem like this like god providing food but really you're providing shit to people to eat to Such make a manipulative sure. i know and then i can't believe also people think that he didn't try to kill her Carol, when he shot an effigy of her on his show and has he had his own TV show in which he said he's going to kill her. He wants her dead. Someone should kill her. Like, that's all he talks about. I know. Literally, if you if you just want to get like wasted one day, watch this show and drink every time he says Carol Baskins, (laughs) Carol Carol Baskins. It is. I I mean, I'm not a fan of Carol and we'll get into it, but the way he treats her is so insane so do we want to jump into carol's okay so joe and his zoo to make money they would make like mall appearances and bring these tiny tigers and whatever the baby exotic animals and people would pay to pet them or whatever so carol um with big big cat rescue would have her workers kind of contact these malls and have them shut them down. So not let Joe bring, and that's how it kind of starts. So it begins with animal rights activists accusing him of animal abuse because they don't want them to uh, breed these animals anymore. So Joe, that's like the the first, there's no like um, death threats at this point yet. They're mm-hmm. just, it's just um, Joe can't make money because she's ste- stepping in the way. So Carol is like, I know you cool cats and kittens. Oh God, it's disgusting. I um, thought you should have opened this episode. I'm so pissed. We didn't oh my it. God, oh. we might have to restart. Wow, I hate <laughs> myself. Hey, you old cool um, cats and kittens. There's already yeah. remixes on YouTube if you want to watch them. <laughs> yeah, so she's this like hippie, older, I would say like 50, in her 50s with this like pussy ass husband um who's just kind (laughs) of hanging around maybe like her business manager literally there is i think it's him like their their wedding pictures she has him like on a leash like like a cat oh my god she only wears cheetah print and like cat print things she's she's so unlikable it's just in herself without anything else just by the way she acts so she makes all these youtube videos and posts on the facebook group and she's just very unlikable i don't know how she instantly when she speaks i'm like i don't trust a word you're saying you are that is not a normal human being you're Mm. playing a role so i read that carol like obviously after the show came out she was not happy (laughs) uh, with how she was portrayed but i read that when they approached her to do this, they kind of framed it as like um, how they did the SeaWorld documentary, kind of like slamming it and trying to get it shut down. The Cove. Yeah, Yeah, like one of those (laughs) documentaries that are just like trying to shut something down. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's how it was portrayed to her. And like you said, they kind of forget about the cats a lot in in this show. It turns to like all the drama that happens. Well, they don't get to the murder plot until three episodes in. Right. You forget that there's a murder, even though it's in the title of the show. Yeah, go ahead. Explain the, the one, the Don murder plot, and then we can get into Is that it. Carol's first husband, Don? Yes, Is Don. that his name? Uh-huh. So Carol uh, started off basically how all these other guys started off. She was breeding tigers. Uh, she had a really rich husband uh, who did a lot of business and saw these tigers as more of a business, and she kind of fell in love with them. And I do think that Carol did have a change of heart with the way 
that she treats tigers and i feel like she found a way to make money off of it whilst i i I think that they at least they're getting the proper veterinary care and being fed properly probably compared to all the other people but anyway she finds out that he's going to divorce her and none of this is proven but uh, she kills her husband and uh, um something oh, yeah. happens where either she has her husband killed or she kills her husband and everyone thinks that she kills her husband killed her husband uh except for the police cuz they don't have enough evidence on it um and joe exotic you know obviously thinks that she kills her husband and the rumor is that she fed him to a tiger which would be probably the worst way to dispose of a body it's to me that's the dumbest a theory is that she Nasty. killed her husband and then felled it, fed it to a tiger. That's like the most obvious thing. That's the easiest thing that you could find. Probably pushed him out of a plane. So there is no body. My dream yes. is is kind of that he emerges. Like just, oh to, I, I think that would be amazing. I'm I'm on team. She killed him, but even better for me would be that if he just emerged from where, where did they say he kept going on his planes? Oh, Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Because he was going down there for business or something. I, I don't yeah. know. And he had and another that, wife down there. Yeah. Kathleen, I think you actually have a really good point because one, they, they were interviewing his family and they were all saying like, she definitely did it, whatever, but <laughs> uh, they're a little biased. They obviously never yeah. liked her. Uh, oh my God. Her in-laws or, ex-in-laws are uh, characters of themselves yes and but they even say like that don was like evil in his own way so Mm -hmm. it would be pretty fucking sick yeah like sick in a positive way if you found out he was still alive and he just like framed her ass to ruin her life i think that was my favorite episode that with yes. the lawyer and the friend that said that Don kept saying, like, if I can pull this off, it would be the best thing I've done or something like that. Right before uh, the period, he kept saying that. And I was like, this is good. This is the episode for me. Like, I really yes. enjoyed that episode. That lawyer. OK, I also loved the lawyer. He was an amazing lawyer. And I love he was so I love the way he spoke. And they like ask him things. and He'd be like, I can't answer that. Or he'd be like, don't know. He was just very matter of matter of fact. We need a series just about Don. About yeah, I know. I mean, they reopened it. They reopened the case. So. Oh, they did. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure she killed him, but yeah. Yeah. it would be that would be the best thing in the world if it came out that he just you know went to Costa Rica and never came back. Yep. You know what? If I'm Carol Baskin, she has some balls on her if she killed him and and, and agreed to do this documentary and be exposed like this. So some yeah. part of me is like, maybe she fucking didn't. Like, yeah. why would? But everyone keeps pointing to that scene where she's like, if you were gonna like sabotage, you would put sardine oil on yourself, not not perfume or whatever she says. Like, she basically mm-hmm. says, if you were gonna kill some, have a tiger eat somebody you would dip them in sardine oil but and of course like why the fuck would she ever say that if she's being accused of murdering her husband but i i don't know i'm kind of now that i'm thinking it through and talking it through this is the most Mm -hmm. i've talked about it i think i'm on team she didn't kill him oh really just to just to be uh i'm devil's advocate here okay i like it I like yeah. it. Your theory is not a bad one. Like, no. like, like, I do kind of agree with you. I just think that she's so batshit. And also, Don was like filthy rich. Mm-hmm. And I would yeah. think that if he wanted to like frame her for this, he would be smarter than to like do something with his money, right? Because they say that she got all of his money. Like, she well, gave, true. She they, gave his kids yeah. like 10 percent if that which is so fucked up but i think that's... they did set it up earlier that he also uh would keep money in mattresses and he had gold bars and stuff so he yeah. he Barry. might have just said like i'm cutting my losses and i'm just gonna take a few gold bars and some cash and just that's, live in yeah. costa rica or you know somewhere in central america for cheap and just live off this and be happy this way i don't need to be rich anymore was he that kind of guy i don't know we don't know don like that we need a series <laughs> You know what else was good was the the verbiage on the will when they said it says yes. or disappeared on it. That was interesting too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's very weird. Yeah. I mean, have it, have you guys seen Gone Girl? Yes. It's basically Gone Girl in it reverse. It's good. <laughs> a spoilers for Gone Girl, I guess. I don't know. Um, nah. <laughs> can we go on to Doc? Yeah, let's get into Doc because. Yeah. 
Oh my god. He is the sexiest man alive. Yes. Yeah. He is apparently he's apparently a real heartthrob. He is a um, heartthrob. He is like this like I'm just gonna tell you my perspective of him, just like mm-hmm. this fat, creepy guy with like mm. a long ponytail. Mm. Um, not even like a nice like updo, like it's like a long, low ponytail. Oh, it is low. Um, it sits low <laughs> like his gut. Mm. Go the on. The only the only <laughs> positive thing mm. about about Doc was that big like king size couch that he had. Like I would love to have that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I noticed but, that too. Your like, arms are so high up. Did you like yeah, like I that's the only thing I would ever um maybe go to his house for. Ugh. No, stay away. Uh, you wouldn't want to wa- see him walk up on you when he's riding that elephant like the biggest <laughs> douchebag in the entire world. Oh I oh don't God, think I you could look more that. smug riding an elephant. He had the, I wanted to punch him right in the face. He had the yeah. douchiest face. Ah. Thinking he was like Prince Ali or something yeah. in Aladdin. Oh. Yeah. Relax, relax, Doc, relax. Yeah, so basically we we find out you know what's weird so when i first started watching this i was like all right so what i'm thinking is is like joe is the villain and then all these people are like good people like that's what i was thinking at first like (laughs) and then you find out more about them and you're like they all are doing the same thing Mm -hmm. but like they're all trying to like carol's going after them because she's like you're doing horrible things meanwhile carol's doing the exact same thing they're doing Mm-hmm. just saying that she's saving them but yeah so you're, they're all i don't really know where i was going with that but they're all well, they're, <laughs> they're all running the same game in but with a different a, a different twist joe exotic is running the take advantage of the people getting out of jail and the poor people doc is taking adv- making it look like he's very rich and taking advantage of women young women who come in and carol is doing the exact same thing but taking advantage of kind-hearted people who think that they're doing the right thing Wow, nailed it. Yeah. So you That's did that better than me. I was like, uh, Sorry. and like, uh, no, I was like, I was like confusing myself of what my point was after that. I was like, shit, I hope someone talks because there's going to be a dead time. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't I know where I was going. In the beginning, I wasn't sure like what the difference between like the literal business they were running between Doc, Joe, and then Carol, like what makes Carol, like why is she on her high horse? And it's, I guess the the difference is that she's not breeding them. She's taking- Yeah, she's the best yeah. of the evil. She's not breeding yeah, them. Yes. She's yeah. giving them the proper vet care, which I think Doc is too. I just think Joe is the only one who wasn't giving them proper veterinary care. Well, let's not forget that that Doc allegedly shoots yeah. the tigers after they reach a certain age. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Why did you say that to me? Sadness yeah. just filled my body. Uh, yeah. So, oh my like, God. it's real. That. Yeah. Like, I actually just gave myself chills. Oh I just my dropped God. a bomb on myself. That's so um, sad. <laughs> yeah. So, like, he might take care of them when they're babies, but after they reach a certain age, he allegedly shoots them at night. And then disposes their bodies. So he's a monster. He is a fucking monster. And he has like 18 wives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're both polygamous. They're in, they're crazy. Well, and he renames his wives. They all have like their original <laughs> name. And then they like take their name. It's like a normal English American name. And they put it through some sort of like racist name generator. And it comes <laughs> out. Like Abby is like Abamantha. And you're yeah. like, what? <laughs> that was amazing yeah. too. I forgot and about he, that. What is sick? He he's married to all these women, and he puts a, he puts photos, provo- provocative photos of them into a pamphlet to hand out as people come in. Of just like these are all the ladies I have sex with. Enjoy yeah. my park. Right, right. And there's one lady I forget her name, but she gets a uh, she's so, I brought this up in the beginning, but she escape somehow which Mm -hmm. i wanted more info on that like i wish that they got into like how did she get out of there because i think a lot of it is like one people don't want to leave it's almost like i texted matt and said it reminded me of like the r kelly documentary where like these like people are so brainwashed washed that they don't want to leave Mm -hmm. but even still like usually when you're in these situations it's not like you can just walk out and be like i'm leaving it was nice knowing you i love that girl I, w- it, I can't believe that she was able to get out of that. Like she is, she she is such an intelligent, smart woman, and yeah. I can't believe that she fell into that. I know, but she was too smart to stay into it. She got out of it, and you could tell yep. she's so ashamed of that yep. part of her life. 
Yep, yep. She, she chokes said, up when she talks about getting a boob job, which like yep, isn't a big deal. No. Out of anything that happens, like, hey, you got a boob job. Who cares? Like people yeah. alter their body. And then she got and then she you could see the shame on her face. Like cause she's not that kind of person. She doesn't right. want to be a superficial kind of person. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it. Again, but it's that's not her. Yeah. And it's so weird. Go ahead. She basically says that he like forced her to do it. Yes. Like, and she was like, the only reason that I agreed to it was because I got seven days to sleep and rest. Ah. And I'm like, that is so sad. Like so sad. these people, they say that their hours are 8 a.m. to midnight and they do the same thing every single day. <sighs> and when she gets interviewed, she brings up that like they lived in these shitty like little rooms and there was like cockroaches everywhere there was cockroaches in the food that they had. Like, it's just like that. It wasn't an extravagant life. So, and then she said, like, you get to move into the nicer room. So I heard like, if you sleep with him or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, this guy sucks. So, I mean, they all suck. He sucks so bad. And I don't know how he's flying under the radar with like all the heat that everyone else is catching. Well, cause he didn't murder his ex-wife or he didn't or he didn't feed people drugs i feel like the joe exotic and the carol like are so huge that he's like the forgotten evil yeah. and he, and he's he's not in it a lot no he's really not he comes like random ap appearances i feel like yeah like, and maybe like 15 minutes an episode or something <laughs> but do you notice that None of he, none of the women, none of his wives, right? They didn't have any interviews by themselves. I don't think he allowed his wives to be interviewed. Yeah, probably because he didn't want them to speak up or say. <laughs> one would it's like they'd probably be like, "Help me!" They're probably blinking <laughs> SOS. Yeah, yeah, Morse code. <laughs> yeah, Morse code. Yeah, he is. He is such a huge piece of garbage. God. Yeah, yeah, it's well, it's awful and they talk about it like it's fine like every like they're not doing anything wrong everything's fine mm. everything's everything's good since it's we're fine. talking about like shitty men who treat women terribly should we jump into jeff low yes, yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i Which, think it's a pretty seamless segue oh t and we're talking about somebody getting away with stuff jeff low is a monster yeah. too oh yeah. my god the only time i liked jeff low is the scene where he's like ripping joe exotic a new one for like spending their money that they have and like basically <laughs> setting him up to get arrested and like joe's it's just like the altercation is hilarious he's like losing his shit and you can tell joe's like scared to death but, but like trying to backtrack and make it seem like he didn't do anything wrong and then he just sounds like a complete idiot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, nobody sticks up to Joe. So that was honestly kind of refreshing to see someone just screaming yeah. at Joe. Because Joe is just yelling at people the entire series. He's wild. Yeah, yeah, that was the only time I liked Jeff Lowe. I was like, all right, we're, yeah. we're cool. They do a great job of being like, oh, thank God, somebody knew. Okay, well, this guy uh, dresses like a complete douche rocket, but hopefully he'll be cool. And nope, he's awful too. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Even, and so he's a convicted felon originally. He's out mm -hmm. uh, drug drug charges originally, I think. Right? Yeah. He's the kind of guy who wears flat brimmed Oakley caps with a bandana <laughs> underneath. Bandana underneath. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. just imagine that, like a gas station bathroom. Wish to be a real boy. Yep, when, that's, that's, when he that's was pretty talking. accurate. With a pencil thin. Uh, goatee with the most disgusting goatee. So he like, well, at first, so again, maybe I'm just an idiot and like didn't pick up on like that. All of these people are going to be bad, but I'm like, when he gets introduced, I'm like, oh, a good person's going to come and make this better. And then you just find out that he too is a piece of shit. I'm just like, why can't I get one good who, who can just come and save the day and not be garbage? No, how about the bus he made? <laughs> Oh my god, the bus filled with girls and tiny tigers? I, what a business model, truly. I mean, see, that's why no no good business person thinks as that's like a viable business solution to like make good money without with being ethical. That's why everybody who does this has to be complete garbage or an, uh, or an idiot. They're all the same personality type. Yes. Like this confidence, this confidence that comes out of nowhere. Shouldn't have that confidence at all. They're so cocky. It's unearned confidence, yeah. How about at the end where they say that his wife is pregnant and he's like, I get to pick the nanny. And <laughs> gotta make sure she's nice to look at. And like his wife's just like sitting there smiling. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? This guy sucks so bad. And it just makes you question these like 
his wife too. I'm like, what's wrong with you? They're all trapped. That's the thing too of like one, okay, you're going to, you're going to think that and you're going to do it. That's one awful thing. But to say it on a television show where you're being recorded like it's cool kind of shows what kind of person he is. Like he thinks yeah. that's a totally cool, awesome thing to say. Oh, yeah. I want to get a hot nanny so I could have something to look at. Yeah, like, oh, God. How about you look at your baby that was just born, you sick fuck? God. Oh, you know, he's, uh, yeah, he's going to be around a lot for that baby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's going to be the next series about him and the mistress nanny that he ran off with. Oh, my God. I hope the nanny kills him. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> And then good. that's a whole story. Wow, that's good. Actually, for the, uh, if the FBI is listening, I did not mean that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, producer Matt just brought this up. I totally forgot about this. When he's sneaking the tigers in luggage into the, like, casinos oh, and having God. people come come up and like take pictures with the tigers and he was saying how like he has to attract like the young hot girls for pictures for like marketing purposes and probably just for himself honestly well, okay so here's the thing it, let's just say uh you know you you two are at a together hanging out in las vegas and uh this this man who once again is a, a gas station bathroom come to life comes up to you and says hey i have some beautiful baby tigers upstairs what would you say to him? Kathleen, what would we say to him? How, who's saying yes to this man? Uh, that is like the scariest situation. I'd call 911 immediately. I'd right? say, oh, no. Something is wrong. Something is wrong here. We would not. We would like be like, oh, no, habla inglés. Like, we would do something <laughs> fucking stupid. <laughs> Like, we would not be like, oh, we're calling 911. We have to no, I would be- never. I would f- I fight or flight. I'm f- flight all the time. Fucking running yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Or we, we would, like, crash to the ground every time we die. Like, oh we my- are not. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand how he's getting all these people to go up there. These people are insane to randomly going up to this guy's room to look at tigers. If you think about, like places like vegas though yeah they're it's a target demographic yeah like people yeah. are like probably like coked out of their mind or like wasted and someone comes up to them and they're like you want to see a tiger <laughs> and they're like, that's exactly why i'm here i, I guess see a tiger. <laughs> finally like, somebody you- asked me that yeah. i thought it was like you know in hawaii when you get off the plane they give you a lay i thought when you land in las vegas they're like you want to see a tiger they're like oh i've seen the hangover i don't want to see a tiger yeah Ugh. truly you know what part i liked this is kind of going off topic but speaking of like taking pictures with the tigers and stuff the part where they're saying like joe or who or or doc would bring these tigers to court and have these like officials or like the judge or whoever it was take pictures with them so when it goes to court to try and get whatever law they were trying to get passed since those literal people have pictures with tigers they don't want to vote for something that's like saying oh this is a bad Mm. thing to do so they're like oh we'll just keep it around because they would literally be implementing themselves since they have pictures with tigers i was like wow the manipulation it's so good like they're idiots but they're not like they're idiots but they're somehow like so manipulative that it makes them smart in a way but like an evil smart not a good smart they're idiots who get to hang out together all the time and have a lot of time when they're feeding you know i'm sure it's mindless work of when you have to dump out all the walmart uh stuff out of the back of a truck uh you know to go through all that (laughs) so you have time to like think of ideas i guess there i was gonna say there was that one guy that they introduced but he was like not really a big character he was in jail and he was compared to scarface oh yeah the guy who also uh runs a tiger thing he's very minor like i think we literally saw him once like they introduced him in one episode and then it was like we didn't really see him again mario tabaru yeah and he owns zwf zoo Mm mm-hmm yeah that was a oh there's so many characters jammed into this this documentary i know yeah and they kind of what was his why was he brought up i think just to show that he does the same thing like i don't really know why he was relevant well nobody co- he doesn't even nobody can go into his zoo anymore because he's just like a, a under the radar right? yeah he's a he did his time and now he just kind of sits in his compound and does oh yeah because they show the one scene where the producers and filming crew try to go there and they mm. get they get told that they can't come 
Yeah. With like without like an appointment or something crazy like that. Yeah, I remember that now. His was like all in his hat. Well, I guess all of these were these people's houses, but like he had this like weird palace looking place that he lived in and it, he had all the animals in there. Yeah, and then he they finally did get to go in and talk to him and he mm-hmm. did and he was he came off like such a mob boss of like yeah. really charming, really relaxed, very flippant about things. Always has his cool. He he was very creepy to me. Yeah. I don't really know if his like purpose on there was like cuz he talked a lot about him going to jail and how he was innocent. <laughs> So yeah. that might have been why he <laughs> agreed he agreed to this, just to, just so everyone believes he's innocent. I mean, best place to do it. Uh, can we talk yeah. about R- Rick, the guy who is the reality TV show producer? Oh, who yes. Basically came up with the name Tiger King and kind of was the tipping point for Joe Exotic, it felt like, is when Joe yeah. Exotic got this reality TV show and he comes in, he starts recording things and then... Uh, They shot the intro where Joe Exotic was sitting on a big throne surrounded by tigers and they put music to it. And apparently Rick heard him listening to the intro over and over again. Oh, yeah. When he's just literally rewinding it over and over and Mm -hmm. over again. (laughs) And so he he gets a ton of footage of Joe Exotic's place and. Joe finally realizes, hey, my business isn't on the up and up. This isn't probably isn't going to be the best thing for me. And he tries to get out of it. And Rick's like, nope, I own the show. You signed a contract. So all his tapes were on Joe's property in this shed that housed some alligators and Joe's uh, TV studio. And I'm doing air quotes right now. TV studio. It's a garage with a green screen uh, and one light bulb, it looked like. And... Uh, he goes, Joe does, well, allegedly, Joe burns down that shed with all the footage in it so nobody can see it and, and kills two of his crocodiles. It broke my heart for Rick. Rick was like, I wasted so much mm-hmm. time. Like, he didn't like being there at all. Mm-hmm. He hated it, no, honestly. And, he, yeah. and, he, and he, when it burned down, he was like, I'm done. I'm walking away. I gotta go. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that had to take everything out of him. He like he put a lot of work and money into that show. He even says that was my retirement. Yeah. Because they accuse him of doing it. They accuse him of burning it down. He's like, that was my retirement. Why would I ever do that? It's And then clearly Joe did it because then later on in we find out like when Joe needs to get rid of footage from his computer, he just burns it in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> So like clearly this dude just burns computers when cuz to get rid of them like how yeah. he doesn't even try to do something different he just does it the exact same way it's ever this time he doesn't kill any alligators One thing we didn't bring up about Joe is how he manipulates his own parents Aww. Yes Oh Like you, you find sad. out like they they interview his niece I think it was and you find out that he like literally takes all of his parents money like they have no money and it's because mm. of him and it's just like oh, another reason why this guy sucks. Just add it to the list. Add it to the list. He ruins everybody's life that he comes yeah. in contact with. And shortly after Travis kills himself, he gets a new husband within three months of his death. And oh invites my God, and when they his invite the mom. husband. <laughs> he invites his ex husband's mom to come to the wedding and yeah. just take some photos to be like, "Hey, see, it's okay, right?" And then never what? talks to her again. It made me question her, too, because I'm like, and, and like, you, you, we don't know the whole story, right? So, like, they obviously didn't say how she felt to begin with. But mm-hmm. I just, like, think of how, like, my parents would be if I was like, hey, I'm uh, 18 now, so I'm going to move to this exotic farm or zoo, yeah. and I'm going to work there, and it's going to be great. And then, then, like, she obviously knows that her son at least wasn't gay growing up, and now he's marrying this man, and then she agrees to work for him. Like, the whole thing is just so weird, and I'm like, what does she, like, really think of all this, I guess, at the time? Like, you just, like, like, I would love an interview solely about, like, her and her thoughts on this. Yeah. I mean, we're just lucky we don't live this life. Like, we don't live this life. There is a lot of people out there that just go rogue and do shit like this they don't all end up on exotic animal farms and get (laughs) tricked into doing meth and marrying a dude even though you're straight and we're lucky we don't live that life truly yeah Yeah. i know john ends up getting someone on the zoo pregnant oh yeah that's right i forgot about that that was his out i know he's no fool 
He does. He's, he knows what it takes. Yeah, he's got all his teeth wow. now. He's good. He got all new teeth. <laughs> he looks. He looks good. I know, and he got his tattoo covered. Oh, that oh, gross yeah. one, Property of Joe Exotic. Yeah. Disgusting. He, I mean, honestly, honestly, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> and then what does he get? Doesn't he get like a an animal there? Yeah, it's a dark, fully colored in bull that doesn't even cover the whole wording. Oh, my God. I know. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, you can still see it. You're better off just getting a big circle. I mean, I, f- I do feel bad for him. Obviously, he's a he, you know, he had some drug issues that led him down that the path to Joe Exotic to do all these things. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he was in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. Did you guys see um, Shaq's appearance in this? If I'm yes. Shaq, if I'm Shaq, I'd be like, leave me the fuck out of this. Like you go to yeah. you go to this thing, this like zoo once you think it's cool. You think it's like dope back in the day, like 10 years ago. And then all of a sudden you're in this documentary that everybody in the world watches. Yeah. Well, and he buys a tiger, doesn't he? Uh, I don't know. I think they talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Like he says, like, um, like I want that one, want something about like buying it. Like he, <laughs> and I thought of that too. Like I was like, did Chuck sign off on this or is there about to be a big lawsuit <laughs> right. against, against this documentary? I think we all understand, like, you know, it. I don't think Shaq knew anything about this. I hope he didn't know anything about this. But also, uh, here's another thing. My girlfriend actually went to <gasps> that zoo, not Joe Exotic Zoo, not the dude zoo. She went to Carol Baskin Zoo because it's called Big Cat Rescue. Yeah. And she was under the assumption that, it, you know, it's these they rescue these cats and it's a good thing. Did she meet Carol? She didn't meet Carol. Because, like, it seems like Carol kind of, like, walks around. They all do. They all need to walk around and have people know that it's their place and yeah. that they own these tigers, you know? Yeah, yeah the personalities on these people. It's, it's, yeah. It's so insane. If there's anything good that does come out of this documentary is that we, you know, it brings a lot of light to these private zoos in yeah in yeah. america and how it's kind of just the wild west and before you go to them uh, do a little bit of research try to find out that they're not an evil place yep yeah the one thing that actually what made me really really sad was at the end where they're like basically saying like joe exotics in jail for 70 70 years, years. and then it says between five thousand and ten thousand tigers are are at places like joe exotics and only three thousand are where they should actually be living wow yeah there's and more, I'm like there's more in captive in, captivity, in the u.s yep. only in the u.s too more in captive in the u.s than there is free in the whole world wildlife just ugh it's it's really sad yeah yeah i don't Uh, know how that's possible i don't get it i don't don't understand that well i didn't even know that there was multiple places like this so i'm sure there's a bunch other just like flying under the radar like does Shaq just have like a big ass cage in his backyard where he's just like keeping tigers like do we know i don't know oh my god please not Shaq. come on buddy I need Shaq's PR person on the line immediately. Yeah. A comment. We need a comment. I could totally picture Shaq walking a tiger down the street like oh, there was yeah. nothing. Um, like, Shaq is definitely keeping that tiger in place. Yeah, maybe. I don't it's know. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, watching this whole thing, it, it felt, uh, I don't know, did you guys ever see the movie The Cove uh, about dolphin hunting? No. no. Uh, it, it's a documentary that came out a few years ago, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe 2008 or something. Uh, and it's about the hunting of dolphins and the animal treatment. And it's a, it's a, a really difficult documentary to get through. It's a really great documentary. It goes, it hits on SeaWorld and stuff like that. But after you get done watching it, you're like, all right, well that I feel like garbage, but at least I know that this is going on. I could be more aware of these kinds of things. So overall, the series, I feel like, is a good thing, even though it's kind of garbage. <laughs> no, I agree, because I think, like you were saying, like, think about go- before going to these places and supporting them and giving your money. I think people, there's always going to be those people that are going to be like, oh, yeah, like, this was hilarious. I can't wait to go to a place. But 90% of the good 
people in the world will be like, fuck this. I would, I'm never giving my money to some, like there's people that are against just like zoos in general because mm-hmm. of yeah. captivating these animals and forcing them to live in cages when they should be living freely. And if you've been to one of these places, there's nothing wrong. Like if you've been to this, if you've been to one of those places and now you realized like, right. it's fine. Like we all get caught up in things and uh, I donated to Coney 2012 back in the day, got my money back. <laughs> But I did donate originally. I got swept up in the whole movement. And it's one of it's still to this day, one of the most embarrassing things. Uh, (laughs) Like you just kind of just get caught up in the moment and stuff. Yeah. So Jeff Lowe, this is how I so there's another episode coming out either this week or next week. Netflix is dropping it. And the way I found out or I think so apparently like a Dodgers player tweeted that they like the show or whatever. So Jeff Lowe and his wife made a video being like, to the Dodgers player, I forget the name, being like, blah, blah, like, thank you for watching our show. And I'm like, this is Fuck not off. your show. <laughs> like, it's as if, like, it, I watched that, like, ten times. It's like, thanks thanks for watching our show. Like, we got another episode coming out next week. Blah, blah, blah. Netflix is dropping it. We're reco- They were recording it, like, last week. And it's dropping next week. So they're doing some all night, all day editing, apparently, and dropping a new episode. I don't know what it's going to be about but we got to tune in for that too yeah we got to watch that and then bacon has to come back on and uh work i would love that. to come back on you guys yeah. great uh, i mean great. i got i got i got free time yeah so we all do house. right we all do so before we wrap it up mm-hmm. you have your own podcast yeah uh 91 yeah. Don- donkey lane yep 91 donkey lane i just listened to monkey paw the monkey paw episode <laughs> yeah, i just listened to it yeah <laughs> It's awesome. Thank Tell you. Tell us about it. Tell us all uh, about it. It's a improvised fantasy comedy podcast uh, with me and my roommate, Nate. We met doing improv I, when I lived in Chicago. He lived in Boston here. Uh, and now we're roommates. We're actual roommates together. And we're like, we need to make a podcast together. And then we're like, well, what happens if it's just you and me? We're normal roommates. Uh, and we treat, we know we have normal roommate problems, but then also there's just like magical, like the house is just magical. So each week there's some sort of problem. Uh, the very first episode, um, I'm mad at Nate because he uh, ate one of my frozen pizzas. Nate's mad at me because I found a monkey's paw and used up all the wishes uh, without telling him. <laughs> we, it's a bunch of nonsense. One week we clone ourselves and Nate is 69ing his clone. Uh, so it's definitely not something you should be listening to with children around. <laughs> We make tiny civilizations. We have guests on who we we had a, a bunch of ghosts in here. So we try to get a ghost expert over. It turns out he just likes to have sex with ghosts. So that didn't help anything. <laughs> but it, it's 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 a hellscape that we live in this house, but the rent is really cheap. So we're not moving. Uh, <laughs> it's really difficult to get a rent in, in Boston. So uh, get an apartment in Boston. So. Uh, we're going to stay in the magical place. Love it. Yeah. Also, I used to do, uh, you guys had Marie on. I used to do the podcast, Adam Sandler, please stop with Marie. So also shout out to them. Still listen to that one. Oh yeah. We love her. Yeah. We love Marie. Shout out Marie. Marie's great. Uh, and that, yeah, I love doing the podcast with her on, on doing all that stuff. So yeah. She probably did our other insane show. We did trading spouses with her. Trade it. That's the one I li- I listened to your guys' episode. I listened to that one, uh, and I love uh, Marie and I both have the same taste in gar- watching garbage. Oh yeah, I get just as much enjoyment out of watching something completely awful, uh, <laughs> out of something completely amazing. Um, which is why Nate and I watch things like Elf stories, a uh, <laughs> an old cartoon from the creators of Elf. Oh my god, <laughs> we're gonna do an episode of that next time you come on. On that? Oh, you guys want to do my favorite episode of I Would Never Do That To You. You do not want to see Elf Stories. It is garbage. If you guys do have me on again, I do have one that I, I they, it didn't get picked up for a second season. You can't find it anywhere. I finally, I found it on an illegal site to just watch it. It's called The Proposal. It's a show in which people are introduced to each other in like a pageant style and they uh, proposed by the end of the episode. It was on ABC and it was garbage. When? Mm. When? Two years ago, 2017. Wow. And you can't find it anywhere? Maybe? It was that big of a flop? They were like, bury it. Bury it so far. Deep. Yeah. It's really... So like Jesse Palmer is the host of it. He's Carson Palmer's brother. That's a old football player. And he was also a football player. 
uh, a backup quarterback for the Giants, I think. And he is one of the worst hosts. He is so stiff. He barely moves his hands. He talks in the same cadence every single show. It's so bad. He was on, uh, I think he was on The Bachelor or Bachelorette or something. He's a very handsome man. I actually watched The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. That's my guilty pleasure show. Okay. That's a lot of people do. A lot of people watch that show. So, and I'm actually going to watch, I don't know if you've guys seen the newest, um, like the same producers as The Bachelor and Bachelorette, and it's called Listen to Your Heart. Oh my God. It's coming out tomorrow, and it's about um, singers that fall in love and then have to get proposed to. So oh if you want to, if you want to check that out, I uh, we're not sponsored by ABC, but I'm promoting it. Let's let's end this with a song. Listen to your heart <laughs> when he's calling for you. <laughs> oh my god, that was beautiful. Julie, that was I thought you were gonna bump in. No, you sounded so good. Why would I? <laughs> There's Why nothing would I ruin else that? you can do. I don't know where you're going. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Ooh, Listen you to your heart. Thank you. Beautiful. I needed a tenor. Oh. Thank you. Thank Perfect, you. guys. You crushed anyway. it. Everyone, listen That's to great. 91 Donkey Lane. It's great. It's, it's funny nonsense. Thank you. Yeah. If you're going to listen to one I, and you don't want to, you want to see if you like it, I say check out our, uh, I think it's episode four, Time Capsule, uh, where it's, we find a time capsule in our wall because Nate tried <laughs> to hang up a picture with a goddamn railroad spike. <laughs> and the whole thing, the whole thing is improvised. Yeah. Uh, well, we talked beforehand. We're like, hey, this episode, we have clones. And then we just kind of <laughs> get into it. Or somebody comes over and they're like, I want to be a ghost expert, but I like to have sex with ghosts. And we're like, all right, we'll get there. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. Amazing. Everyone check it out. It's on uh, Spotify, iTunes, all the platforms. So go listen. Bacon, thank you for joining us today. Thank you guys so much. I had a great time. Uh, I would love to come on again if you'd have me. We will have you. Absolutely Absolutely have you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Stay safe. Hopefully, we will get you through this quarantine with uh, our new episodes. We're social distancing from each other. It's really tough, but we're getting through it. Um, And tune in next week for another episode. Woo! This has been my favorite episode of. My Favorite Episode Of is produced by Matt Kelly as part of the Geekscape Network and hosted by Julie and Kathleen. Check out our show notes for all of our socials and email us at myfavoriteepisodepodcast at gmail.com. Rate, review, and subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting apps, and we'll be back next week with another episode of My Favorite Episode Of. listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.